All right. Well, let's get today's show started with old Akram Wadley, mm. senior out of Iowa, standing 5'11", two hundo. I'll toast to that. It's one of Jay Wayne's uh, personal faves. <laughs> I, I also enjoy some Wadley, but probably not quite as much as Jay Wayne does. Um, so what's what's your uh, what's your favorite parts my, of old Akram's game here? My assess. Yeah. My assessment. Well, let's get the cons out of the way real quick. There's like just basically two cons, right? He's a little bit small. He's in the two hundo ish, smaller frame. Think of theoretic kind of guy. Um, Stop it. <laughs> well, that's just your go to. That's people's go to when you think of a smaller frame small dude. Small guy who can catch balls. Yeah, or Jamal Charles. You're either really good or you're theoretic. Like that's the only thing you can be as a small bag. Anyway, that's one kind of con you can have against him. Um, even though I think that he's got the workload to show that he can handle the rock if if need be. Um, and then the long speed is like not top notch, but he busts off plenty of big runs. I think it's pretty good, but it's not just it's not it's not Ronald Jones good. Um, that that at the long speed anyway. I guess I could give you that, but but I, think I the do long think speed's better than some people think it is. And I think the athletic ability is very solid. Like he jumps off the page to me in in a way that kind of Ronald Jones does. Um, he's he's very very shifty. He can operate in a tight box, as you like to say. Um, I love the quickness. I love his ability to shed tacklers, spin moves, stiff arm, are dirty. He yeah. can make you miss altogether if he wants to. That spin move and jump cut are so lethal. It's like my favorite thing in his arsenal. That spin move is ridiculous. Yeah. He's he's aggressive. Aggressive expansion. He's he's almost mean at times. He takes what's there in a hurry. Um, he makes quick quick decisions he's very decisive it's got a, a good quick twitch kind of reaction to him right exactly um he he showed me also though some tough some tough running he would grind out one to two to three yards usually right. falling forward has that kind of chip on his shoulder um but then he he sets up his blocks well and he'll give you a hesitation move he was beating guys with just a little head well, fake yeah. and not even wasting any movement in the nice lower head, body got a nice head fake Go, going back to um, the doesn't shy away from contact kind of thing. Like <clears throat> last week we talked about Penny and um, Royce, Royce Freeman, Freeman, who are both above 220 pounds, mm -hmm. six, six foot plus guys. Yeah. And don't should be bangers. Don't consistently run like bangers, especially Penny. I don't think, um, I think Royce had some, like we talked about, had some, had some times where he did it. Um, but these 200 pound guys who are a little slighter framed um, seem in this class seem to be the roles are a little bit reversed. Like right. You got these 200 pound guys, the Wadleys and the Justin Jacksons who we'll get to. And we talked about Rojo uh, last week who all kind of run with a little bit of tenacity and, and toughness about them. They don't shy away from the contact. Like if you come at Akram Wadley, like you're just about to throw this little man down to the ground. Like mm -hmm. you better come correct. He's going to make you look stupid. If, if you just try to give him a, a soft arm tackle and, mm -hmm. and obviously sometimes he does get tripped up and, and taken down with, so you, you can't don't at me with some soft tackle from Akram Wadley. Like I understand <laughs> everybody gets brought down lightly sometimes at IMC Myers, but I mean, for the most part, this guy with a 200 pound frame that everyone's going to point to that, you know, isn't a big back. These all these most of these 200 pound guys kind of have a little bit of power. Don't shy away from contact thing to their game. And maybe that's by design because they know they're a little bit smaller and they know they got to put, you know, the fact that, hey, I, I can I can still bang with, yeah. with these collegiate level athletes. Right. And and I think if you put Akron Wadley's running style with Kalen Balaj's body and athletic profile, you'd have a ridiculous back. Maybe maybe not running style, but maybe mindset, mindset to running. Yeah. Like the running, you know, obviously he's right. a, I like a that. lot smaller and, and uh, a lot slimmer and a, and a few inches smaller. But if you put his mindset in Kalen Balaj's body, I think there would right. be a whole different... Uh, we, yeah, a whole different... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There'd be a whole different narrative in my mind around mm -hmm. Kalen Balaj. Right. Um, and, and we'll get to Kalen Balaj a little later for your pleasure. Um, but I, I mean, I just, I really enjoyed watching this guy on film from pretty much day one. Um, I love his ability to string moves together. It's only a matter of time before he rips off big chunks of yardage. Um, and he's grinding it out for me in between the tackles and getting the tough yardage as well. And he can catch. Oh, and he can catch. He's which a is, catcher. Which is what I think, you know, 
the next level is going to look at him to do, in my opinion. Um, the catching is going to come into a uh, huge play for him at the next level. He is an okay pass protection. Um, you don't... I, I didn't see a ton of examples um, when when watching all the film. He typically is going out um, yeah. to catch balls. He'll he'll cut a guy, you know, when when asked to. But Shot I saw blocking. him get I saw him get run through a couple of times. Um, but again, he moves out of the backfield a lot. And <clears throat> as we've been talking about, I feel like pass protection as a college back is is a rare thing to be like, oh my god, he's such a good pass protector. Yeah, and and effort's definitely not going to be an issue with this guy. Um, he's, he had 71 catches in his career, th- over 30 each of the past two years, which is really when he's getting most of his work and right. production. Um, he's got pretty sure hands. I like the crisp routes out of the backfield. He spent some time in practice at slot wide receiver. So I, I just I like all this stuff about him. The start and stop are tremendous. Yeah. Um, and then on top of all that stuff, um, all the guys we're going to talk about today are pretty good interviewers. They pretty much – show you what you want to see and and you know they're getting coached up to to tell you what you want to hear but I still do want to hear what I want to hear if that makes sense um but this guy just seemed to be the most level-headed the most down-to-earth real kind of character um he seemed to be like being himself you could see how to he had developed a relationship with the people in the press room mm-hmm. he knew their names he told them he was all gonna miss them when he was gone um, at his last press conference after the Boston College game in the Music City Bowl that they won. Um, he had like inside jokes with him and stuff. Like he just, you see him developing character. Like y- you can see his character kind of come through with that. And people yeah. like, like him. It's hard not to like this dude. Um, he seemed like he had a bit of a sense of humor. He seemed like he was a humble dude. He's got, he talked about his family. He's got a big family and a lot of support behind him. Um, the, one of the reporters brought up, said, said this to him. He's like, I don't know if you knew this, but you finished one touchdown short of the school record. And he kind of smiled, dropped his head like he knew that was the case. Yeah. He didn't get the record. And the reporter was like, you know, you were on the one-yard line, but the coach didn't give you the ball. And he was like, yeah. And he was like, and the coach said he would have given you the ball had he known you could get the record. And he was like, yeah. And he was like, you could have told him. And and he was like, nah. He's like, we got the touchdown. That's really all I care about. Right. And like, he just let the record go. There's no way he's going to be like, hey, coach, let me get this yeah. record. You know, that's just not who he is. Um, and so he, you know, he was also talking about how they had worked on some specific things in practice and how that translated to the field and it became second nature and how he respected the process and he wants to put in that work in progress. And, you know, again, like I know these guys are coached to tell us what we want to hear, but I was just very impressed coming away from it. Um, on top of loving him as a runner and really like, and his catching ability. And like, if you look at the game log, I know he's not the bigger dude, and he's probably not profiled to become a, a, an every down back in the NFL, but he was a workhorse for this team. There was plenty of games where he was over 20 carries right. a game and a bunch of catches. So I, I don't, I'm not saying that he's going to be a feature back, but I think he could become one. Like yeah. I think he has all the tools, and, and maybe, he's, maybe he's never going to be something better than a really strong RB2, but I think that's – a solid RB2 is the floor here, and I, sure. I'm all about safeness and comfortability and liking a dude's work ethic, and I just – he's he's shown me everything. These are just kind of why – and on top of that, I just really like him. Something down inside me just has liked him the whole right. time, down in my, my down, plums, down in you plums. know. Why to take these plums to farmer's market. And take them to market. Two for one plums. Two for one plums. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one plum, get two free. So- <laughs> Well, I, I don't I don't disagree with with anything that you just said. I, I I looked into a lot of that stuff. I I I like you do like Akram Wadley a good bit. You probably like him a little bit more than me. You probably have a little bit more confidence in him being a feature back. I don't necessarily believe that he possesses that trait. Potentially, but, he could be, but I think you know what you're going to get is is a little bit of a satellite third down and and can mix in. Um, on first and second here and there and and get his team some tough yards like we just mentioned like he's he's not a he doesn't run like uh i don't (laughs) (laughs) he doesn't run like uh, you know he's made of glass like he like he's only 200 pounds he runs he runs strong and i think you know that'll about to say something worse than glass there (laughs) that'll that'll bode well for him at the next level um obviously iowa is not the most potent unit in college football but Wadley is always and consistently the biggest part of any sort of the offense that they had oh yeah um you put him in a one-on-one situation in any type of space he's 
nine times out of ten, nine point nine times out of ten, going to make the guy look very foolish in space. Um, How many attempts did he have this year? Two hundred and fifty. So the biggest thing from <clears throat> from maybe junior year to senior year was that he went from uh, one hundred and sixty eight carries and a thousand yards. Average in 6.6. You saw a drop off in the average coming into his senior year, but he also had 252 attempts, which was good for like 16th in the nation. Um, and he only, he still only had 1,100 yards, which was only 100 yards more than what he had last year. But you still saw him be able to be productive with a higher volume of work, which, you know, in, in my yeah. mind, isn't a bad thing, especially out of a guy who's with the smaller frame and, and to the next level, I think you know, that's probably a good thing to see that he can handle right. a little bit of a workload. Not that he will. I don't think he's going to yeah. handle a huge l workload at the next level. But, you know, I could definitely see him falling into a, a nice third down role. And I also believe that this guy can be a, a, a good kick returner, punt returner right off the rip and, and give you those opportunities to, to show what he can do on the field, in the open field and be able to finish runs and all that kind of stuff. And and. If he does that kind of stuff well, I think I feel like that can, you know, lead to better opportunities on the field if he isn't, you know, carved himself out a role right away as a third down guy. If you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, they definitely they they his senior year they played with him at, at kick returner a little bit. He had nine for for two hundred seventy one yards. It was a thirty yard average on a return. Um, and and you talked about you know playing in Iowa. It's it's a solid solid uh competition that he's playing against right. over there so penn big state 10, good defenses michigan state uh, ohio state wisconsin this year in that um, uh penn state game he was a big part of of you know keeping that game to yep. even close to where it was and, and then and if you take it back to uh, 2016 they played michigan in week uh 10 michigan was nine and zero in that game coming into there and akram gave them their first l uh, 23 attempts for 115 yards. Right added, on his shoulders, yep. Added 52 receiving yards on five catches and another touchdown. Like, just carried that team. Comes up big for his team in the big spots when they need him. Clutch team. Clutch. Clutch team. And, and, you know, Iowa traditionally runs that zone blocking scheme, and he has all the traits that fit right into that zone blocking scheme. We're going to talk about Justin Jackson a little later and how he kind of fits into – the patience and, yep. and the decisiveness to make those cuts and that kind of shifty guy and, and letting and, the lanes open up for right. themselves and using the blocks well Akram and fits right into there but absolutely. it's not saying that he's just limited to going to a team that runs zone blocking schemes he can catch passes from anywhere right um, and he can create and, on his own from right, anywhere exactly yeah i'm i'm good let me give me some Akram wadley i'm probably gonna have him ranked way too high i don't know i'm that's that's fine though. That's what you got to do. You got to you got to get. Yeah. In, in my opinion, you got to get the guys that you want and that you believe in, especially in a rookie draft. That's kind of what it's all about. Eventually, you know, you got to probably start looking at the value and where the market and where people the 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 big guys end up ranking these guys, and it kind of spills over into the mainstream of drafters. And then eventually, you got to start grabbing the value. In my yeah. opinion, but. You also have to have, you know, a strong conviction of these are the guys that I want and I want to put on my team. Right. So, yeah, you got to you got to have no regrets. You know what I'm saying? No <laughs> not regrets. Even, not even like one letter. <laughs> yeah. Was that uh, meet the meet the Millers? We yeah, are the Millers. Are the, yeah. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right. Well, let's let's get on to uh, the next guy who's a who's a little bit different of a player, a little bit different of a frame. We're going to get into Josh Adams after the break. 